down to 10 men. So they're, they're a bit all over the place in terms of position wise. Um, and I remember, if you say this is the byline, I've got the ball right here. And there's a person, there's a player right here, but he didn't press me. I didn't know that until afterwards. So I got the ball and I'm dribbling out at like five, 10 yards. And earlier on in the game, I had an assist um, to where the number nine made a run and I played it down the line for him um, and he scored. And he was making the exact same run. So I'm looking up and I, I see him making the run and I go to kick the ball and then I, I don't remember anything. And I think I've gone down, I'm, I'm looking up at the sky and I'm thinking, oh, I've just been kicked. Like, it's no big deal, I've, I've just been kicked. Um, and then um, I'm, a bit, I'm milking it a bit, a little bit. I think we're winning, so mm. I'm wasting a little bit of time um, on the floor. And then I'm literally on the halfway line, right next to our bench. And the physios come over, the coach is like, oh, yeah, yeah you're good, you're good. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm fine. And then I got up, I just thought it was a kick. So it's just an impact injury, impact injury. So why is it you felt an impact? I felt I've been kicked in like the back of my calf. Okay. Because your Achilles is the long tendon yeah. that runs behind you, um, yeah. behind your leg. So I thought it's just an impact injury. It's no mm. big deal, and there's no blood. There's no none of that because it's internally it's ruptured. So I get up, and I because I, when when you're injured, you've got to go off the pitch and come back on the pitch. You've got to wait for the referee to wave you on, and I start walking. I I, I took one step with my right leg. And everything was fine. I took one step with my left and I fell to the floor. And that's when I thought, like, what what is going on? Because and I felt like extreme pain that I've probably never felt before in terms of I, I just fell down. I was like, like how what? did what, how did that pain feel? Like if you can describe that pain. It was it was like someone I, I mean, I've never been stabbed, so I, I would I couldn't tell mm. you definitely. But it's like someone had a knife and like stabbed the back of your leg okay. and it was just like incredibly bad pain I, I remember screaming um, and I, I fell back to the floor and they knew straight away like you you got to get the stretcher he, he's not going to walk um, and I remember when I fell back down I looked into the stands and I looked for my dad he, he wasn't there and I felt that missing presence if mm. that makes sense um, and then when I fell back down I was like okay this is bad this is this is really bad mm. I can't even take a step and at the time it was more like I didn't I didn't want to believe it was bad if that makes sense so I'm I'm being carried back now to the to the change room game's still going on uh, they made a sub so I, go, I get back to the change room uh, I go into my bag get my phone out first person I call is my dad my dad because he, he's in America at this time so I, I'm like dad um, I've been kicked I'm injured um I think it's bad, but I don't know how bad it is. Um, I'll be all right. Um, we've got a game next Sunday. I'll be all right. Dad's kind of panicking because he knows I go through thick and thin. Like I'll go through anything um, to keep on playing. And if I've come off, it's got to be for something bad. So he's kind of panicking. And the club are like, okay, they assessed it. Uh, at the time, it was starting to swell up quite a lot. I'm thinking I've just been kicked. At this point, nobody's told me that I haven't been kicked. So when I'm sitting there on the phone... Oh, wait, so you haven't been kicked I at haven't, all? I haven't been kicked at all. So at this point, I, I've got no clue of it. I just think, uh, there's someone behind me, about five, ten minutes. He must, I was dribbling. He must have been tracking me. He's just, he's gotten pissed off or something and he's just, he's kicked me. So I'm thinking, okay, it's just, it's an impact injury. He, he hasn't broken nothing because I, I can't feel nothing. I, I can feel my, my ankle's fine. My, my, um, my bones are fine. My, my leg's not broken. Yeah. So what is it? Like, what's happened? And I'm sitting on the phone to dad uh, while the physio's there. And obviously I'm speaking in English. The physio speaks very little broken um, English. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't understand what's happening. He doesn't... And I, I said to him, because I speak Spanish as well. Yeah. So I said to him, look, I'm going to call my dad. Tell him what's going on. He's like, yeah, yeah, you, you tell him. And I was told dad in English and he, he's not... Under, uh, he's obviously not understood it. Um, the physio. So then he's like, okay, we've, we've got to get you a scan. Um, and I was in quite a bit of pain. So he was like, look, you can either go now, you can go get the scan now, or you can rest, leave it overnight, and we'll go first thing in the morning. I was like, okay, um, let's go tomorrow morning. Because at this point, I've also played 
80 minutes of a game so I don't want to go around crutches mm. um, to go get a scan and sit around and all that kind of stuff I wanted to relax go home have a shower and everything and then me be kind of naive I was like oh, maybe tomorrow will be alright um, yeah. and I remember I went home um, it's very difficult because I was on crutches um, I went home showered and I, I kind of just I sat back and I analysed and I thought how's that happened like was I not checking my shoulders was was the hold the ball too long like what did I do wrong in that situation for mm. even to allow that player to get to me at this point I still have no clue that nobody's kicked me so I go in the next day I go into the club um, Rara Valicano and I go in and the physio's there and everything and he's like oh, how's it feeling he takes a look and it, at this point it's like double the size mm. so the, the left leg is like double the size of the right leg have you got photos of all that as I well? I have yeah, like, yeah I mean I've sent them to me so I can um, show everyone the impact yeah so it was I mean it was grim it was disgusting um, and it was it was huge compared to the other one and I'm thinking okay maybe it's just kicked me really hard uh, and then obviously I go to get the scan oh no before I went to get the scan I remember um, there was one of my friends there um, he was injured at the time as well so he was in early um, getting some work done with the physio and the physio goes oh how's it feeling and everything yeah. he goes I'm like yeah it's, it's hurting but it's not too bad I can put a bit of pressure on my leg so I feel like nothing's broken because if I can move my leg around if I can put, pressure, put a bit of pressure on it I'm alright and then I sit back because I was analysing the night before I'd, I mean I didn't sleep uh, I slept maybe not even an hour um, and I go to him so how's it happened? Like, how's he kicked me? How have I not realised that? Have I not checked my shoulders and passed the ball off or um, something like that? And he goes, you weren't kicked. And that's when the penny kind of dropped. He goes, you weren't kicked. I was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, no, no, I, I was kicked. Like, I was so adamant I was mm. kicked. I was so sure of it. Um, and I went, no, no, I, I was kicked. I, I'm, I know I was kicked. And he goes, no, I'm like, no, you weren't. And I, I'm speaking in Spanish to him. So... Then I'm sitting there thinking, is something lost in translation? Because my Spanish is good, but it's not amazing. Yeah. Um, so I was like, is, is something lost in translation? So that's when I went to my friend. I said, look, can you translate for me? Um, because I think something's been lost. And because he's injured, um, he was watching the game. He was sitting on the halfway line on the opposite side. And he's like, oh, would you want me to translate? I'll translate for you. I was like, okay, he's saying I've been kicked. I haven't been kicked. I know I haven't been kicked. Um and he goes, he put his arm around me and he goes, what, you think you've been kicked? And he's like, no, I, I, I'll tell you, from me to you, you haven't been kicked. I remember sitting there thinking, oh my God. I, because, you know, when you're kicked, it, it's an impact injury. Mm. I, but when somebody goes down by themselves. You know it's serious. You know it's, yeah. you know it's bad. So uh, I was watching um, one of the Leicester games the other day. And I think someone called... Justin James did his Achilles and it was very, very similar to how I did mine. It's just, no one kicked you. Did that come um, into your head straight away that that was what happened? No, because this was this was recent. This was like two weeks ago. Um, but when I did the injury, I had no idea of how somebody ruptured their Achilles. Um, and to be honest, I thought I just, I really thought, like deep down I thought I'd been kicked. And it's only when my friend said to me, or my teammate said to me, you haven't. That's when... It kind of, the penny kind of dropped and it was like okay this is this is serious and I remember being in that medical room and I just started crying and it was I mean not many people know this story um I remember crying and the physio was there and he started hugging me he's like look it's gonna be okay let's get the scan done and everything and um, well why did you cry what was going through your head at that time because I knew uh, I mean I knew I mean I've had multiple injuries before um and you know when something's bad but what I had thought and what had actually happened were two complete different stories. And I know in the past where um, players have always gone down by themselves, it's always something um, that's really bad. Because for your body just to stop like that and almost give up, like my Achilles just, I'm not going to say it, it gave in, but it, it snapped, it snapped in half. So for that to happen, um, something, something was wrong. And I knew, once he said it, I kind of put two and two to get like, my leg was huge. I had, there was no bruising. There was no, like, there's no lumps anywhere. Like, if you're kicked, you know, or if you like, if you bang your head, you get a lump on your head. Mm. There was no lumps anywhere. I was like, okay, 
slowly, slowly it started to add, to add up to a point where, okay, this is bad. And then went, got the scan, result came back. Uh, I think, so the game was on Sunday. This was on Monday. And the, the club actually, they wanted to operate on Tuesday. And I was like, they told me the rehab plan. And they said, look, it's going to be at least nine to 12 months what's out. The, what's the operation that... So it's Best. basically, it's, it's called an Achilles repair. Okay. So if your Achilles is like this, yeah, it's separated into two. They've got to mm. stitch it back together. Okay. And they, they told me the, um, they told me the rehab would be nine to 12 months or at least eight. And they said, you're not really going to get back quicker than eight. And I remember um, they gave me a whole bunch of like documentation uh, outlining everything. And I was like, oh. In my head, I went, I can't do this. I, I, can't, I can't do eight months. Um, and that was just the initial thought. Was it that you can't take eight months out? I was like, at first I was like, it's not going to be eight months. And I, second, when I started researching it and looking into it, I was like, I can't, I, I can't do eight months. Like, compared to where I was a year ago, I just signed for Real Valacano. I, I was on top of the world. And now all of a sudden, I'm going to be out for eight months. Season's mm-hmm. only nine months long. Sometimes, I mean, give or take. So it's like, hold on, you're going to be out for a whole season. Uh, and then I also asked, like, look, when do you expect me back? And they said, look, you'd be lucky to play again next season. You'd be lucky. And they gave me an example of, I think it's Spinozola of Italy. He did his in the Euros and he didn't play a single minute the following season. And it's like, okay, go look at players that have done it. There have obviously been players that have done it quicker, but you can't, everybody's different. I can't say, um, oh, I'm going to do it in nine months. Mine might be 18 months. Mm. Um, but when it initially, when they said, look, it's going to be nine to 12 months, I was like, I, and bear in mind, I was in Spain by myself at this time. Mm. Um, my dad found out the news, obviously, he came to Spain straight away. And the stories or the things that I could tell you behind closed doors, what actually happened, like basic things you don't even think of. When you're on crutches, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, so I get all, all of my food made for me. It's all in containers. But where the fridge is, where the containers are, I mean, where the fridge is and where the microwave is, I'm not right next to yeah. each other. So when you're on crutches, you yeah, hands I know, I know. I've been on crutches. I was on crutches in November, I think. Or Sept- no, sorry, September I was in crutches. Yeah. So I know, I know. It's like the simple things, like, yeah, just like moving around, for example. Yeah. So I remember... Um, so where I live in Spain. Um, so where do you live in? Spain? I live in Madrid. In Madrid, okay. I, I live in Madrid. Uh, I live in, in in an apartment complex, and where you park the car is two floors down. And okay. I think I live on the second floor, or something like that. I remember. Um, I think it was the second, the second day. I think this was um, the Monday when I came back from the scan, or when I came back from the club, or something. My head was everywhere, and I left my phone in the car. And where I live, there's no. Um, because it's a new complex, there's no lift. So I went up, I think I counted, I think it's something stupid, like 95 or 100 stairs with crutches. I went all the way upstairs into my apartment, unlocked the door, sat down, realized and realized oh, I, le- <laughs> I, left, I left my phone. So I got all the way back down. No way. It gets worse. I went all the way back down, got it. And then I got back upstairs. And now I'm thinking to myself, I've left something else. I love something else. And I think the phone rang and dad was like, oh, um, what did they say and everything? And I've realised, I've left the documentation that they gave me of the the report of what happened, like the results of everything. I left that in the car. I was like, oh my God. I've got to go all the way back downstairs again and come back all the way upstairs again. Um, and that, that was hard. Uh, basic things. Well, 100 flight of stairs walking is hard to learn <laughs> <laughs> on no crutches. Um, it's not 100 flights. I think it's like seven... Seven flights? Seven so flights, like, but hundred stairs. stairs on crutches. Steps, and sorry, it yeah. Was, it was horrible um, in terms of going through it. And when I was told nine to 12 months, I was just like, oh, I can't do that. Like, mm. That's that's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to be eight months. What was your, what was it that you was scared of at that time? I was scared of not being the same again. Okay. Um, Physically or mentally? I think a little bit of both. Mm. Because when... I mean, anybody that's had an operation knows you're not really the same mm. again afterwards. I mean, I've had my knee operated on. Um, and 
I mean, it's been better ever since I, I tore my meniscus. The, my right leg has been a lot stronger. But you also hear the flip side of it, the bad side of it. Oh, I had, um, I had an Achilles surgery and didn't go the way I want. I had to retire from football. And yeah. I was told... Uh, is this what you're like hearing or seeing or is it this the stuff you're searching on the internet because it's what everyone does immediately? It was everything. Because you know what? Between the time of... Achilles rupture and Achilles surgery, I didn't I, I didn't sleep more than an hour a night. Mm. That's ma- and that's not um, sleep one hour and then up for twenty three hours. It'd be like ten minutes and then wake up and it's just you get you get scared of things. Yeah. Um, you get scared of basic things and it's like, oh, am I even going to be able to walk again? You go from training every day, putting hundred percent, pushing your bodies to absolute limits to not even being able to walk. Something you've known since you were a baby like it's it's really scary to think of and i remember thinking oh, am i going to be the same and this is all initial th- thoughts i think it it kind of it took a few days to process the whole thing everything that had happened to it and i think it, i got to a point where it was it was like a switch mm. you know you can't you, you can't think like that okay it's happened it's happened you've got to move on um, so did you like switch off during that time? how long was that switch off period for it was for quite a while to be fair because so the injury happened on the Sunday uh, the results came back on the Monday and then the club wanted to operate on the Tuesday but once we found out everything in terms of um, recovery time and what the rehab entailed it, I was in a boot for 8 weeks or 7 weeks or something like that and it was okay the season's finishing in 2 weeks I was supposed to go back to my family for four weeks, spend some time with them, and then come back to Spain. But if you're telling me I'm going to have surgery, I can't. F- I think they told me something. Like I couldn't fly for the first three months. When you're flying high and you're up there, people love you. Mm. But when you're down low, that's when you find out who's really there for you. Yeah. And I could probably count on one hand how many people really know what I went through. Mm. How many people really understand everything mentally what I went through because it's not easy when they're saying to you oh you're going to be stuck in bed for two weeks do you feel like people feed off that energy as well you know when you're down I feel like people do um, I think they do without knowing as well you know like when things aren't going right you there's there's a lot of people say they're things paying like more attention yeah because they're like there's certain people in your life that want to see you do well but not better than them if you know yeah. what I mean yeah so it's like it has that same kind of respect in the sense of if you're down, yeah, they'll be there for you. They'll understand. But will they do that little bit extra more to make sure that you're all right? Yeah. And that's sometimes a phone call, but sometimes that means like really understanding what that person's been through. Yeah. So um, did you feel like a bit of that? Like I'm sure, and I'm sure you're going to tell me bare stories now, but loads of doctors come out at this point. No, it was, I had my team around me. Um, and When I, was, I say doctors, I mean... People who think they're doctors, oh, but so, not actually doctors. Media. Yeah, <laughs> social yeah. media around you, family, friends, whatever. The thing is, when it, when it actually happened, I didn't I didn't publicize it. I mm. didn't put it out there until we knew what the actual strategy was. Am I going to have surgery in Spain? Okay, what's the rehab process? What's the rehab plan? Because I knew all those questions were going to come, and I just I thought to myself, you know what? I'll post one thing about the injury. I'll post one thing about the surgery. And I'm not going to touch social media mm. because what's the point? I think I just wanted to be secluded. I, I wanted to be away by myself um, and not have anybody around me, if that Was makes that sense. the right decision, you think, at the time? Hindsight, maybe yes, maybe no. But what I would say, I wouldn't I wouldn't go back and change anything. Mm. Because, I mean, after surgery, who wants... I mean, I love my family to bits, don't get me wrong, but who wants five, six, seven people coming seeing you in your room and, oh, you know... You know <laughs> that sort of thing and it's just like it's something you just don't want to hear yeah yeah it, cause, is that what was happening though I mean we have a big family anyway but I hadn't been back to England since December so and this was now June and obviously I haven't seen the wider family um, since so then. you had a lot of visitors so basically I, I had a lot of people and they wouldn't just come up to my room like my dad would come ask me oh this person has come to see you do you want to see them and it might be a bad thing um, but sometimes I said no I was like look I don't want to see anyone I respect that they come to see me, but mm. I don't want to see anyone because I don't want to be around anyone. And I think, I think it was really tough for the people around me to 
to have been around me around that time because I snapped at everything, mm. every little thing. Um, it was like what was it? So evidently there was a bit of anxiety in you. And what was, was the main yeah. main thing that you was feeling anxious about? I think prior to surgery was getting everything done. You know, let's have the surgery. Let's make sure everything's okay. And I think in between that time, it was something like 10 days to get the results, travel back to England, um, see the surgeon, uh, get another scan here, and then get the surgery done. I think that was that process was 10 days or two weeks, something like that, which is usually a, a little bit long. I mean, the club wanted to operate the next day when they found out. Um, but obviously for me to travel back and everything like that, um, it took a little bit of time. And I remember there was... Um, they gave me injections to take um, because it thinned your blood. Yeah. So I can't remember what it's called, but... Another one because cancer patients take you, those as well. You know, uh, like my granddad, he takes insulin every day. Yeah. So you've got to grab your stomach a little bit and you've got to put it in. And I have a huge, huge phobia of yeah. needles. Like really, really bad. And it was to the point where I, I, was get, I had to be injected every day with it to thin the blood so there's no blood clots. Um, even then, my foot, my foot went purple on the flight. It was, it was horrible. Um, and it was just like I didn't want to do anything I was like what's going to happen if I don't take blood thinners are you going to get clots I'm already injured I don't care mm. but that was that was a wrong approach, approach to it because that's a serious thing if you get blood clots exactly um, because it can do more damage and I was told a stat um, I think this sort of switched my mindset a little bit um, I was told a stat when I think when I was just coming out of the boot or I'd been in the boot for a couple of weeks. I went to see the physio and he was like, 33, but so it's one in three. One in three, don't play football again after an Achilles rupture. The other 33%, they're worse off. The other 33%, they're better off. And he was like, you decide which which one you want to be. If you'll never play football again, keep going the one you're going. If you want to be worse off, don't put in any work. If you want to be better you know you've got to get your head down you've got to get your mind out of the state that it's in and you've got to put in work so was that a mind thing that he's talking about or a physical thing everything around the injury around the surgery everything was in the mind everything i mean what was the things that you heard from people like did did you then hear doubts about yourself and other people doubting you as well to me i don't really listen to other people um and especially with the negative stuff i know the close team i have around me the people that i trust and if they're telling me something um then it's something completely different but if it's the wider circle everybody has an opinion mm. everybody always says um I, if you watch the euros oh harry kane should have done this oh yeah, luke shaw should have done this oh mm. pickford should have done this okay but are you an expert in that field are you working with them day in day out are you seeing what they're doing off the pitch mm. Um, to be able to make those judgments and because I do feel like now with footballers it's not just um, I mean I'm probably at a higher level now but do you feel like if you are Ronaldo for example how much following you have on Instagram does play a part into where you're being signed to it does um, the Ronaldo situation is something completely that's different. totally different but let's but, just say like you've got for, in your situation it's probably different in your situation but let's say for example you was going to play in La Liga or Premier League football mm -hmm. Do they look at somebody and say, okay, it's a dad, you've got 10K on Instagram, but then um, somebody else, Zidane number two, has only got like 3K on Instagram. Um, you're a better footballer, but he's got more followers. Do you think that that kind of plays a part in the signing process? There's definitely a business aspect of football um, in terms of behind closed doors, what happens in a football club. Um, but I think mainly what football clubs look at is they do look at the overall overall picture in terms of your social media what kind of presence you have um but i think it's more they rely on your football because when you cross that white line if you're not doing your job and if you're not if they know they can get somebody better to do that job they'll get someone better mm. and in football there's always someone knocking on the door there's always someone ready to take your shirt on reflection i'm just thinking now like with the way it's a lot of pressure for you personally as a youngster, like, do you feel like you've missed out on a lot of stuff as well? Had oh, choosing this life, hundred percent. Because I started working when I was sixteen, right? So, I remember my friends being out 
living life and like I lost a lot of friends because I wasn't there doing that funny enough I was working in my dad's restaurant in them days so it's like between 16 to 18 from you know sec- um, sixth form all the way to uni I was working there and um, my dad needed the help so it's like but I feel like he probably didn't need the help he was just trying to keep me yeah. away from that social life mm-hmm. and I kind of probably the best thing that I ever did I learned so much there but um, it kept me away from that and just kept me quite straight headed but do you feel like you and I, and I always think back maybe I shouldn't have worked as much as I did um, but at the same time you don't know what you're what's going to happen yeah, in, those, exactly. in those days so it's like I could have been you know I don't know what I could have been if, mm-hmm. if I knew that or maybe I wouldn't have focused as much as I focus now and I still have loads of other regrets that I should have focused more but yeah. um, in that situation yeah but like do you wh- what do you think you missed out on during those those years especially being away from family when I was in America mm-hmm. even now when I'm in Spain um you miss out on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I had, I had zero social life, but to me that wasn't a problem. What's the, what's the prospects like looking like now for Asian players coming into professional football? I mean, it's definitely looking good. I mean, you've got Hamza Chaudhry who's already at top flight playing for Watford. Um, he's on loan from Leicester. Leicester I believe. Yeah. Um, there's someone with the exact same name, and he's Zidanek Pal. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's at United. Manchester United. Yeah. Um, Issa Solomon, he's playing top division in Portugal, I believe. Um, Jan Dander, he's playing top flight in Scotland. Um, so there definitely is names flying about. Mm. Um, and you know what? I think it looks good. Because um, yeah. I think all we need really is that one person to break that barrier and consistently have a, like, have a top career. Mm. Not like diminishing anything anybody else has, has done. Um, and just... I think you need that role model, that one person to look up to. Because right now, kids look up to Ronaldo and think, oh, wow, you know, mm. look at Ronaldo. If we had someone like that in the Asian world, um, by Asian, I mean... Um, our yeah, a not, South Asian person South, doing the same yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, South Asian. Do you think yeah. that's enough, though? Because let's be frank about it, it's not just that the fact that we don't have... Because definitely, if there is a, an Asian player mm. of that ability somewhere in the world, but definitely there's something blocking them from getting there right football is many many different aspects i mean um luck can also be an aspect Mm. of it It, it, football is also about opinions um i mean i've had multiple people tell me that you're never going to make it and look where i am today Mm. make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms as well at moving famous this episode will be up at the same time the audio will be up on all social media platforms as well so the main main thing you need to do is like comment and subscribe that's very very important because the bigger we get as a team the bigger the podcast get the bigger the best get uh, the bigger the guests get and i learned that from watching um what's that geezer's name from dragon's den zach stephen bartley's podcast i watched his podcast it's a decent podcast isn't it